Hey guys, welcome back to another P3D video. Today we're flying this British Airways Airbus A320. FS Labs have released the update so we can now fly it on the P3D version 4.5 Hotfix 2. We're sat on the ground at London Heathrow and uh, we're doing a four hour flight all the way down to Tenerife. Uh, so the length of flight that we're doing, I really do want to get our fuel on the aircraft as soon as possible. Uh, so let's get inside, and let's get things set up. So FMC, Let's go ahead and bring it up. I'm not sure why there's no lighting bug up there. It's not showing. Anyway, it should pop up like so. Uh, but we do need to get the power on, so actually it can tell us what to do. And get the RSs lined up, and get the cruise flight option on, and the nav light can go on. No smoking, definitely on, not on auto. And we can get this side up as well like so. Now I can go to the Atsu AOC menu. This can go over to the FMGC uh, 1911, that's correct, in its page. So, flight number today is Speedbird uh, 414. I'm just going to plot that in there and in it request. No answer to request. That's because I put BAM instead of <laughs> BAW 414. In it request. There we are. Cost index 27, cruising altitude is 330. And uh, we'll go and request the winds, like so. Now that's entered, we can go and go over to init page, and we can click init request. You fill out the uh, flight number and the flight uh, time, which is 4 hours and 3 minutes. Lovely, that's received. Go to the fuel page, and our RFP data, and trip fuel's not, uh, block fuel's 13, 7, yeah, that's all good. Zero fuel weight, are we 61.5 on the zero fuel weight? That's correct too. Cool, let's clear that off so it's automatic. There you go. And uh, via G6, send that off. Cool. So, yeah, the current time is uh, almost 12 Zulu in the uh, in, the, in the sim. Basically, midday. I oh, know it's not midday. That would be uh, 1 o'clock, wouldn't it? Company message already. We've got a load sheet. No, it's just a normal message. Stop time. Uh, tax time is 20 minutes. Uh, expecting the delay. Uh, off the blocks at 12.30. So, half an hour should be off the blocks, apparently. And. There is a lot of aircraft, <laughs> or AI aircraft. We're not, we're not on Vatsim. I don't do Vatsim on full flight videos. Uh, I think I'll just increase the video length. I don't know. I don't know how I think that. I think it'd be cooler if you guys really, really, really want Vatsim. Uh, just post it in the comments section. Uh, I'm not sure why, but my aircraft seems a bit more blue than the other aircraft around. And I do know why, because the texturing made it look blue. I looked into the files, and it's not a complete white. I don't know why it's uh, been made to look bluish. It's just what it is, right? Two BA A380s, very nice. There's some 747s around. I've got one weld there as well. Uh, yeah, this is uh, pretty nice. UTL. Sadly, with the normal sewed, uh, jetways will connect up to the uh, AI, but because there's this GSX level 2 sewed, it won't connect up to the AI, which is rather annoying, but it will do. All right. I don't know where the fueling truck comes from. No idea. Sometimes they like taxi on the runway, which is rather interesting. But uh, I'll skip the video until it, uh, until it arrives. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, the fueling has just begun, as you can hear. <laughs> and that will get going and up to like, what, 13 tons? Is it or 10 tons? I've forgotten. 13.7 tons. So, go to the boarding page. Just double check 31, oh, 61.5. Just resets everything, make sure everything's all set, like so. And we'll go and request the catering now. Like so. And we'll go with what, Cuisine Air. If anyone knows what the catering service is at. Was I thinking Skate Gourmet? I can't remember. Anyway, yeah, if anyone knows what the catering service is at, G, uh, at GSX, at Heathrow, please let me know, because then I can ed edit the, uh, the config so that uh, only the certain uh, catering service will come over. And it's just got a whole lot foggier. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Not. Um, yeah, I've already said it's like a gate gourmet vehicle at Heathrow once. Ah, I can't remember. <laughs> it, was, it was a long, long time ago. Uh, so, GPS Prime, we can, I can go away. just want to check the 330 cruise altitude. Does the aircraft climb any higher from 330? Yeah, it goes to 330, then 350. Uh, how a little step climb halfway. 
and this final initial is uh, 330. And then we'll begin. Basically, it take about a few minutes for the Cajun vehicles to get here. Uh, which will be, let's say, let's say 1212, we'll begin boarding. Like so. And it's requested boarding at a time of 12.12. Cool. Received messages. We've got the initial load sheet. Uh, so expecting a 0.61.5 at a CG 35. That may change, but we'll just keep it there. I'm expecting a block view of 13.7 as well. These can all change, uh, so we'll make sure that uh, we change it if there's any differences. So we'll set that like so. Flight plan, 2-7 right departure today out of the Gosku, Gosky, I don't know what the full name is that, uh, Gosky, Gogsy, one Foxtrot departure, however you say that <laughs> word. Um, so that's entered, and we've got the whole flight plan in, as you can see, all the way to Tenerife South, like so. Don't have the arrival in yet, that's fine because the winds can change after four hours. Uh, so we'll, yeah, we'll just leave it like that. Perf page is obviously not entered, so we'll have to uh, wait for that. And I think when boarding starts, I can't remember when, uh, but you get a uh, an estimated load sheet, I think. And uh, when we get that, we'll do the perf. I can't remember. I think BA do some special ops where uh, the last time I flew BA. When we started taxiing, we got our, I think, I can't know if it's our load sheet, or is it, I think it was our performance, uh, performance, like, message to tell us what performance we have to do. So, I think uh, we all have to start taxiing before we uh, fill in this page. I can't remember. I think it was something like that. Uh, but anyway, let's go and get the, all these turned up and on. I'm not sure why they're not white, though. They should be white. Click reset. That is nothing. <laughs> I think these, yeah, they should be white, so it's turned on, but it's just not. Unless it's only done that for, like, these uh, VHFs and HFs. Oh. Unless it goes, oh. <laughs> it's just what it is, right? I guess uh, I just can't change it. So the KTM vehicles are here, and we should get, yeah, boarding in, in uh, three or four minutes. Cuisine air. There they are. So... I will. Uh, I'll see you once uh, spawning uh, begins, and then we can get some other stuff getting going on the aircraft because uh, it's it's a bit of a wait when we have almost thirteen, almost fourteen, sorry, tons of fuel uh, getting loaded onto the set by safety twenty. So yeah, I'll see you once spawning starts. Okay, boarding has begun. Uh, we have these massive uh, loaders, <laughs> the Commander fifteen I, um, connected up to the aircraft. We're not actually going to get massive. Uh, pallets, though, and just the typical uh, AKH uh, pallets. If you don't know what that is, then you'll see it when it connects up soon. Um, I just want to show you again. I keep showing this neat feature when I'm fueling the um, FS Labs, and it's it's going a bit loud now. So, but the really cool feature is transaction is fuel, customer is Speedbird, Tail, uh, Golf, Echo, Uniform, Uniform, Yankee, location at Gate Five One Five. Uh, flight, uh, whiskey, okay, uh, that's just a bit off there, but 414 is correct. Destination is GCTS, that's um, in Tenerife South, and an Airbus A320, and the fuel price is $2 to uh, 25 cents per gallon, I'm guessing. So that's our bill. That's great, it's actually really cool. Um, you've got almost 9 tons of fuel on the board, so about 4, 4 point, almost 5, basically 5 tons left of fuel. No, 4 tons, for 5 tons, I can't do maths. One of the two uh, left of fuel to go on on the aircraft now. So, if I go and... I can do performance requests now, and I can't remember which one it is, which one takes forever to uh, uh, receive. I mean, the load sheet should come through anyway, because you can't just not get a load sheet on taxi. Uh, anyway, Heathrow known sections no wet. It, uh, it's not wet, but it's been a bit foggy. Um, I'm going to put yes for that, just in case. And the current winds, we can just double-click this. So 26 to 12, that's correct. It's currently 1003, and it's 15 degrees at departure runway 27 right. And what we'll do is Toga, no, config 1, yeah. And what we'll do if we go to receive messages and go to this load sheet, takeoff weight says 20, uh, 75, we'll add uh, 
five of a ton to that, just in case of any extra fuel or extra passengers or extra cargo that we're not expecting. And uh, the siege doesn't really matter, we can change that uh, if it's not 32 when we get all the aircraft loaded up, because we can take a look down here and find out what it should be. So that's entered. Uh, so we'll send it off. And that's queued now, that's sent. So maybe or maybe not, we'll get that back. I can't, like I said, I can't remember if it's the load sheet or the performance request that we uh, that we get on taxi. I'm not sure if it's even going to happen today. We may even get them all before taxi. It's just that one live stream, I think it was, that I received it on taxi, which is very weird. Anyway, now that's done. We'll get to the uh, sit on the perk page, I guess you could say. And we can do flaps one. We're definitely doing flaps one and no takeoff shift. So we know those uh, those two. 6,000 feet transition, 1,500 feet engine outs. Cool. And as we did see that, QNH is 1003, so we'll set that on all these displays. Right. So, and we'll set 7,000 in here. No, 6,000, sorry. Was this, I think it's 7,000 initial climb that they typically do. And we'll just hit the 10 ton mark on the, uh, the fueling there. Lovely. Got 141 passengers. I think it was 141. Uh, passengers. Oh, I don't want to add up all those. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of passengers. There you go. So those types of pallets are coming onto the aircraft. They're quite small, but they they aren't meant to be small because they're going to the Airbus A320. But like, I don't know why I've got this massive like blooming thing. <laughs> I'm gonna get all those loaded on. Anyway, I'm not sure. Do they load even when the fueling's starting? Because that's already glitched in. It's going to glitch even more. But whatever. Wow. That's six, six grand. Oh, six thousand dollars. Blimey. Is the fog? No, the fog's. Is it getting worse? I mean, it's been a while since I last had a foggy departure at Heathrow. It's, it'll be interesting. I can't even see. The the end of Heathrow right now. Um, I think this is the uh, Terminal 4, which is just rather crazy. Um, yeah. Oh, that A380 that was there is gone. Didn't notice that. Some Virgin Atlantic A340 and the end of 787 as well in the background over there. No the remote stands. Um, and yeah, they are going to get loaded on. Okay. Well, GSX, thank you for the uh, amazing realism here. <laughs> well, anyway, that's that. What we gotta live with. At least I don't have to wait for like five of these pallets to get on the aircraft. I don't think three normally would be the standard anyway. Per like maybe three is not too bad. Oh that guy's legs is inside. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Anyway. Yeah, very small pallets are just getting when I did on now. AKH as you can see. I think we could probably fit three actually, yeah. That probably is right. That's just the bolt cargo that goes up there, so they just go through here. Anyway. Back inside the cockpit. And we have a company message. We have a performance come back. Okay, so we're, we're answering these in then. Uh, so I have said yes to the wet, uh, but we won't do toga, which we would normally do when it's uh, wet conditions. Because uh, it isn't really wet, it's just a bit foggy. Anyway, we'll put down 0.8 for the trim. That, like I said, that can always change. Uh, format error. It's DN, isn't it? 0.8. Like so. It literally says DN there. I don't know why I didn't do that myself. Flex to 57. And V1 is 133. 157 on the rotate. And 159 on the V2. So that's all. Oh, stop like that, my bad. There we go. That's all entered in. Anything else? We don't really need to see anything else on this page. So that's all good. Go back to the receive messages uh, page. We'll go to the fuel page. We'll hover on this page. And once fueling's done, in about, yeah, it's got 1.6 tons of fuel left to get on the aircraft. Still refueling. I can't, I don't know if this is my uh, longest flight I've done in the Airbus C320. Like with the latest um, GSX advancements. Because it used to just like, just plonk in the fuel straight away. And, uh, and it was refueled instantly, but I just love this feature. But it's been it's been a very long time. I've just been sat on the ground refueling. But now this is making me wonder: How do you refuel a 150-ton flight? 150-ton um, 
uh, fuels for like 747s and whatnot. Surely they'd be fewer faster than this. Fairly certain. Anyway, baggage isn't taking too long to actually get on the aircraft, which is nice. Oh, it's got a little like sheet on it. Can you read it? Kind of. It says AKE. It lies. It's a common texture then, I guess. It's AKH. Anyway, now it's getting really loud. So, it's, wow. Now I know why they wear headphones <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> I mean, these guys aren't. These guys are just sitting there on the steering wheel, just like, and, and, I don't know, imagining something. This guy's got headphones. That guy doesn't. He's the only guy that's actually protecting himself, which is, uh, which is good, right? She isn't. He is. He is as well. It's two, two men who are actually uh, being careful about their ears. <laughs> and four who aren't. Well, one woman and three men. Anyway. Ooh, I just realised that with all the fueling, that's bringing the weight down on the aircraft, isn't it? Oh, so that's so that's so cool to open. Anyway, yeah, this uh, this is actually glitching through the aircraft. These I just saw it in the aft cargo there. But I'm not sure if it's just because the aircraft weight has gone down over time with the refueling. Or it's just... Or maybe in real life this opens more. I don't know. Doubt it. But it only just glitches through. We'll see it again here. So... That's fine. But then... Then it goes through there. <laughs> Is it fine when it's in though? Yeah, it's, it's kind of levitating, as you can see. It would be a bit lower in, in real life. So yeah, that's, that's that. Anyway. Refueling should be done ever so soon, actually. We should, uh, we should get refueling done and the boarding complete at the same time. Which would be awesome. So there you have it. I just got the ding for refueling complete. And it should also say boarding complete soon. So there you go, boarding complete. So this should be uh, filled out very soon, and we can send it off, and we get the load sheet back, hopefully. Sometimes it says uh, we got a received message saying the the fueling isn't complete, but we can't complete this off uh, or tick it off once uh, once everything's come through. So we have to wait for that. But yeah, board is complete as well. So those cargo doors will be closing up soon. They are closing up now. Nice. What's that in the back? Is that just part of the Airbus A320? No, oh, that's just an open flap. I don't know what that's for, though. Um, it's, it's an outflow valve for something. Not too sure what it is, though. Anyway, let's go and uh, let's go and get the APU started up, and the seatbelt signs can go on now because refueling is done. This is still has to come through. So yeah, we got 13.7 tons of fuel, or block fuel, and because boarding's complete, we just double click this. So if your weight is uh, 61.4 and uh, CG is 32.4, get the APU sat up now with the, uh, the, uh, the flaps open. And 13.925 into there. And send off. Now I get sent. And we go to the season messages page. And like, like I said, I can't remember if we get the, uh, the load sheet, but it doesn't really matter because we've uh, calculated for a heavier weight. And if our trim does change, then. Uh, then we can quickly just see, or CG, sorry, can change, we'll quickly uh, just look it down there. Anyway, let's go and get, oh no, we don't do that, we click it here. Let's go and get deboarding, so, uh, <laughs> deboarding, pushback, my bad. Uh, push back onto alpha facing north. There we go. And that jetway should be going. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so that door's closed. Meaning we have got the load sheet, but for some reason it just doesn't come through until until taxi. Uh, so APU is available. APU bleed on. External power off. Beacon light on. There we are. Make sure fucking break is set. That is set. And Hello, typically, Hello, automatically, the external back. power and the chocks just go away. Uh, but I think I've left it too long. So, oh, oh place. I was disconnected myself. Like so. And then we can go to the, the Atsu AUC menu. 
I'll just hover on there. Hover on the uh, receive messages page. There we are. So, GSX get connected up. Oh, this is the uh, this is the tug that lifts up the uh, aircraft nose, but because of flying the FS Labs and how complex everything is, it doesn't actually lift up the nose. Uh, but it would be cool if it did. It lifts up the 787. Uh, I know that. That's pretty cool. Anyway. Departure check completed. Bypass pin inserted. Okay. Release parking brakes. Right, parking brakes are released. Commencing push. All engines clear. Okay. Start at will. We are starting at will. So all the fuel pumps. Literally all of them. Definitely got fuel in the centre today. All the fuel pumps are up and running. We can begin a timer and we can set ignition start. And let's wait for the ignition valves to be ready. And we'll start number one. Uh, I think we're going to be doing a single engine taxi today. Anyway, let's get this all set up now as well. Like so. That Cool. Yeah, single engine taxi for sure today. Oh, I haven't actually checked the flight plan. And, we, are now going to bring you the and we have some issues. I thought everything was fine. Let's go to the plan. It's fine, we can do it with the pushback. Easy. What's the issue? Uh, it goes to that waypoint before it goes to Gosby, is that? Or Sam? Yeah. If I get rid of that waypoint, I think everything's going to be happy. Insert. Yeah, I don't know what that was about. It's all fixed now. Okay, cool. So yeah, single engine taxi. So yeah, we always start number one because uh, number one will give the uh, the hydraulics to green and blue. Uh, you can get the PTU valve open or auto, but just get the electric pump for the yellow, and then uh, you can get everything all going there. Okay, I just heard that click over, so the electrics are switched over for the uh, engine one generator. Go to the electrics page, you can see that's on and running. Go to the hydraulics here. You can see that because that's closed, we need to get the electric hydraulic pump on for the yellow. And that'll just get powered up because that's rising again. And there you go. So we'll do that. That started up, so that can just go to normal. Like so. And I can just sit there. And like I said, we'll, we'll start number two down when we're taxing down Alpha. 4827. Right. Bypass pin removed. Okay. He's disconnected. We won't do the flight control check because, uh, well, we can, but I don't know if the engine 2 is actually going to do any hydra hydraulic madness, but we know the electric works. If engine 2 doesn't work, I guess we could get the hydraulic uh, electric one running. So I guess we can do the flight control check, actually. So, full left. That's checked. Full right. Yeah, all the way down. All the way up. That's checked, and we'll do the rudder now, so full left rudder, and full right, beautiful, it's perfect here back again, and we can set 0.8 down, I can set it, nope, get to view, I can see it, there we go, 0.8 down, cool, I can get rid of the flight control, flaps 1, let's put on the spoilers, max auto brake, just have to wait for the uh, GS6 vehicle to get out of the way, and then we'll be out of the way. On our way to Tenerife. Tenerife yeah, South, that is. Off they go. And I think we're good to taxi, because how's he going to weigh us back? I think he said wave goodbye as waiting for them to move out of the way, so taxi light can go on. We'll keep the APU running, because uh, do need the APU bleed uh, to get number two started up. So, park brake released. Pedals connect on. So we actually steer around and uh, get a bit of power to get us going. There we are. He's a bit quiet, but I guess we are inside. Love some going for taxis. <laughs> Lovely. Company message. Ah, see, load sheets come through. <laughs> Uh, so, takeoff weight 74.9, we, we estimate uh, we put in uh, 75.5, so that's all good. And CG so for takeoff is 30, so not 32, which we originally, originally um, entered. So, go back to the flight plan page there. 
And if I go over to here, 30 is actually... I'm trying to taxi at the same time, which is rather annoying. And obviously we're just running engine number one. We're going to go slew off to the uh, off to the right. So if I just bring up this, and 30 is about about there. So 0 0.4 down will change it to. Uh, so down 0 0.4. So we we'll get this back to the flight control page and just set that to 0 0.4. Five, four point four. Attack in Bravo. Okay, there we go. And we get the ten last lights on. Love it. And we have a taxi all the way down to Bravo. Right, let's go and skip the video because it's a very long, uh, long, long taxi, and I'll skip it until we get the engine started up. Okay, welcome back. And uh, we're just passing the hotel and section here. And I thought, let's go get the engine. Uh, engine number two is up now. So, we set ignition start. We have to make sure the throttles are on idle. Like so. Because we are running uh, IAE engines, so we should just be fine to just to keep it on idle anyway. Because uh, just keep taxing anyway. So, we'll get engine number two set up. And now let's get powered up. Like so. I'm not sure if they're typically this stop uh, not, uh, to start up the engines, but I mean, what's the point? Is there any harm in starting it up and taxi? I don't think so. Uh, we're just taxiing way past that <laughs> A319. As we take forever to taxi all the way down to uh, runway 27 right. It's our block time so far. Eight minutes, blimey. Anyway, we should. Uh, See that saying available once it's all good to, uh, it's all started up. And what we'll do, we'll do another flight check, uh, flight control check, just in case to make sure no hydraulics have failed. And uh, they shouldn't do. That was do it once uh, another one, just a guess. And what I'll do, I'll get rid of the pedal disconnect so I can then I do fine, fine movements on the ground in a straight line. It's just easier to taxi in a straight line with the uh, with the rudder because it's a bit more finer of movements. So yeah. Should just hit a little ding, or not a ding, more of a click. There we go. So this is a click. There you go, available. So this can go to normal. Like so. And once that avails, the sign goes away. And there we are. Let's we'll take off the APU. And the electric pump can go off. Oh, let's dub plate it then. I'm not an idiot. to the hydraulic page. That's off. Our drugs are running. So I guess we don't have to do another flight control check if we know that's running. So that looks all good. Okay. Let's get this back on again so I can actually taxi around these corners. Cool. Pluto uh, coming up across Pluto, that's an interesting uh, <laughs> name for a hold hold short. Uh, do we just taxi? Should we just go on the runway here? I mean, we haven't calculated full length, so maybe not. We'll go on the next one. And the cabin crew should be uh, seated for takeoff then. Don't know if we get Norman or what is it, whatever her other name is. I don't know the name of the. Uh, the cabin manager today. My bad. Uh, do you have this? Oh, yeah, she's come over to say hello. Hi, it's Hannah. That's Hannah, that was her name. Bye. Thank you, Hannah. Ha Hammer? Hannah. <laughs> Reset that. There we are. Right, let's get on to the runway. So, all that lights on? Actually, let's make sure that the aircraft are coming into land. No, we should be fine. Anyway, T gas can go on. And the weather predictions. Yeah. Predict wind shear and does the weather radar. Those are on. Uh, oh, there is an aircraft landing, but it looks of it is landing on 27 laps, so we, uh, we should be okay. Like I said, let's make our way into the runway. No point stopping. We'll get off straight away. 
So make sure the lights are up and running. Yep. And the flaps one set. Take off config. Normal. Uh, oh, engine two oil temp is low. Yes, I just remembered about that, about this IA engines, not bad. Maybe we do have to sit and wait for it to uh, heat up. It's at 45 degrees right now, I mean, that's not too low. But it doesn't like to go full power once it's a bit. I think, it goes, I think it's alright when it reaches 50 degrees Celsius or 55. Uh, but we'll just wait here and uh, until it, until the warning gets away, basically. And once it does, we are, we're, we're zooming out of here. So we'll just hit the uh, parking brake and we'll release the pedal disconnect, like so. And we'll just wait and uh, until it gets to a hot enough temperature. It's 50 degrees. Still doesn't like it. Okay, that's all good now. So let's get going. So parking brake is released. About 50% or halfway pitched down. And we'll get 50% on the thrust here. So, make sure that spools up very nicely. That does. Man flex, SRS, auto thrust is blue. And, oh my gosh, these sounds have changed so much from the previous update. And thrust is set. SP the live. 100 knots central. Wing view. Shaders haven't loaded. Black spike. B1. B1. Did I enter these V-speeds in the right? Rotate. Anyway, it's still fine. We're in the air. There we are. I know the V1 was so low, uh, gear up. So low because we set wet for the runway. Because the braking distance would be uh, more, more increased than a dry runway. I think that's why B1 was so uh, lower. Anyway, gears coming up. Gears up. Lovely. Alright, London Heathrow. Should I get a good view of London Heathrow in the aircraft at the same time? Didn't really manage that. Anyway, we're in the air, we've made it. Uh, into the clouds we go. Right. There's acceleration attitude, so pinch the nose down. Set climb thrust. Let's pilot on. There we are. Uh, bye bye. London. I forgot to start the timer. No. Uh, it's actually alright though, because uh, if we go to the. We'll go on this side actually. At Sir Asu Init Mini. Init page. We've got the flight time here, in fact. So instead of having a wonky flight time there, we'll stop that. And we've got the flight time and the block time anyway. Uh, so yeah. We'll do all that stuff for us. Anyway, there we are. Flaps up, otherwise we're going over speed. <laughs> there we go, flaps coming up. Ground spoilers disarmed. And we are going to clear ourselves up to 330. Like so. No restrictions, open climb. Up we go. Flaps are up, spoilers are in, ignition has gone off, so it's back to normal. Because there's no, uh, no extra drag from the aircraft. And there we have it. A lovely successful departure. Can we see the ground? Uh, just about. It's a bit foggy. Just a bit. <laughs> it's, it's rather foggy, actually. Interesting. <laughs> lovely. I guess now we're like out of the foggy sort of area, coming into the open blue sky. Yeah, the aircraft's actually turning to be a bit, a bit whiter than it, than it did on the ground, I guess. The bluish white now actually looks white. <laughs> okay. We'll zoom out here and here. We should get train on D on that. I like the train on that side, this weather on this side, and the airports. I don't like it, the airports. I could probably just put constraints on, but whatever. It's just something different. I'm not going to put any NDBs or VORs on them. What's the point of those? Lights bank. There we go. Cool. So, yeah, 6,000 feet. And we'll set standard on all three. I keep forgetting about this display. On all three of these displays. 
I'll do this one first, so don't forget about it. And leg spike, as soon as we pass 6,000 feet. There we go, standard, standard, standard. So these are a pull to uh, set standard, and this one's a push. <laughs> it's, it's a bit annoying to remember that. Anyway. There we are, that's 10,000 feet, we'll set the landing lights off. Because the gear's up, these landing lights do absolutely nothing, so this can just go off like so. And, yeah, like I said, 10,000 feet should be it, set the landing lights too off. Got a left turn coming up. And there we have it. Take a look outside again. The beautiful aircraft, when the shaders actually load in. There you go. Oh, beautiful. Anyway, that's, uh, that's for the cinematic time. We'll do that. Check them out then. Apparently we've got three tons of fuel when we land. Uh, a lot better than the, the last full flight video when it said we're going to be landing like, what, 0 0.9 tons of fuel? But it couldn't do the wind prediction. Uh, this aircraft can. So that's uh, all good. Let me zoom out of this again. There we are. It was 500 feet until we uh, reached 10,000 feet. Still, like, of course it's still foggy, it's not going to go unfoggy, is it? Unfoggy? Is that a thing? Oh, black screen, lovely. Still, it's not, it's not too foggy, you can actually see the ground. But not very far. What was that to Sky say about the visibility? Uh, yeah, 3,000 meters. There we are, 10,000 feet, let's off. There we are, so that's a successful departure. Check, t oh. Oh, since tank feeding. Okay, that's fine. Since tank is just feeding uh, to something. I don't, know, I don't know what that means. No idea what that means, actually. I'm guessing just feeding the engines? I don't know. No idea what that means. Because I hope it's coming from the sense tank. But no idea if it's like feeding into the, the, the um, left and right tank. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Thank you guys for watching the departure. I'll see you in the uh, arrival into to Tenerife South. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, departure. I've just said that. And enjoy the cinematics and bye bye. We are in the descent, just past flight level 145 on the Autis 1 X-ray arrival uh, for runway 07. We'll be doing the ILS approach, uh, and that's the Zulu uh, ILS approach. And if we go to the perf page, let's go into in, first of all, our minimums for it. I've also got some of the weather entered. Uh, what I'll do, I'll go and re-request that once we put the minimums in. So the minimums that, that we will be using, I feel like I just did a tongue twister there, whatever. Uh, well, we will be using a uh, 435 on the MDA. 
There you go. We will be using. Got it in the end. There we are. Cool. Go to the other page. We can go to the Atsu AOC menu. Request the wins for Tenerith. That should come through. There we are. QNH is 1020, 23 degrees, and 070 at 15 knots. This is all exactly the same. Approach speed is looking at 150, but rather high, and a uh, landing speed of 145. I was just thinking uh, if I could have done a, a flat uh, three landing today, but because we are quite heavy though, and we've got like about 3.6 tons of fuel on board still, um, I'm not gonna, really going to go for the uh, Config 3 landing today. Uh, the runway is only 3,000 meters long. Um, there's no uh, space for any, uh, I don't want to say screw ups, so that's that. Um, so that's everything done, all ready to go. Just sending down to 10,000 feet, I'm going to change that down to what, 4,000? When does the ILS start? 2, 3,000? Uh, we should be on the ILS at 4,700, so I'll just set to 4,000 then. I was thinking maybe I could go direct there, but I'm guessing the uh, descent rate will be definitely be increased. I'm already descending at 20, uh, 2,000 feet a minute. Uh, that's it. That's almost said 20,000 feet a minute. Right. Good to set out to 250 knots, so uh, we'll bring the speed brake on the ground spoilers out. It says, uh, no, yeah, speed brake, and it's ground spoilers when you're on the ground. So, yeah. Oh, there's no island over there. Can we see anything? What would be cool is just like seeing mountains poking out the top of the uh, top of the clouds. That'd be awesome. But uh, I don't I don't see any of that going on. Anyway, 10,000. 10, we will be getting the lights on, and I'll see down here you can see 6,000 feet is our transition flight level. So that's when we're going to be setting QNH 1020, and there's 10,000 feet. Land the lights on. The reason why we're going out to 250 knots is because of the max speed restriction at 10,000. Oh, 10,000 and below. 250 knots or below and we are just about getting there now which is good what would be really nice I don't think that happens in real world but like PNDG made like the engine shake on their 747s uh, obviously when like N1 or whatever vibration you can see here um, PNDG yeah like I said made the vibrations for the engines I don't know if the Airbus has it or the Airbus 820 but if it did, that'd be so cool if FS Labs was able like, to program all that. Because that, it just adds so much, just that little bit of realism that just really just makes me smile. Anyway, what we're going to do is we are going, it says we're going to reach, what, 4,000 feet by by this waypoint. So actually, I'm going to, not that waypoint. So 6,000 there, which is just happy we're going to be reaching that. So I was thinking maybe doing a little quick... Uh, direct but I think it's a bit too late that for that now anyway. There we can see the island of Tenerife. Looking lovely. Obviously the uh, the textures don't look so good on the cliffs because it, it's a cliff and the way it, textures work just doesn't work well as a cliffs but still just don't zoom in and it'll look alright. Anyway it's a bit cloudy though which is rather annoying. Visibility is fine there's no fog. Uh, the, the clouds are just uh, at 4,000 feet, basically, apparently, according to Atis Sky. Does it say it in the weather report? Uh, yeah, scattered 3,900. It does. Cool. And they see visibility is uh, beautiful. Anyway, go back to there. Alright. So, 1,500 feet till 6,000. So basically, we're only passing that waypoint Bamel. Was it Banal? Banal. Uh, we will be going to set the uh, QNH to 1020. So, just approaching that 6,000 feet mark. There we are. It's just cleared off. So, we'll go and set the QNH 1020. Let's shoot our altitude right up. <laughs> there we are. There we are. 1020 is set. There we are. Cool. Did I just say there we are? Like, with three times within like 10 seconds. <laughs> Runway's over there, or well, airport's over there, somewhere. Can't really, I think it's, yeah, it's there, isn't it? There it is. And we should be getting there very soon. So, landing system, get that all up and running so we can see where we are compared to the glass open and the localizer. It will be blurred right now, but we are gonna go back and around, so, and we are descending, so it should be fine. Uh, and, 
I'm going to go to manual heading mode here. And just descend as fast as possible to this altitude, which would be nice, but for some reason I can't get open descent. Now I can. So we go about a heading of, what, 170? That should be enough to get us on the localizer. Like so. And I've got to speed down to 210 knots for now. We are 14 miles out from the runway at 12 miles out, we should be at 180 knots. Uh, but we'll get down to 210 uh, for now. With the speed break out. And we we'll go down to uh, 3000. Actually, it says 2600 there. If we go down to 2600 for that waypoint, basically, we should be fine. As long as we're always constantly below the sky slope, then we're, we're absolutely uh, good. So let's go down to 10 miles. This is 20. Yeah, more flaps is always good. So there's flaps one. Get rid of this speed brake, because otherwise, it be, as you saw, it a bit, a bit moon. Doesn't like this. It doesn't like it out. Okay. That's fine. Just as long as it decels, that's that's all good. And a bit more of a left turn, otherwise there's a localizer anyway. Approach. I can't arm that yet, okay. So, why can't I? That's very weird. Why am I clicking it? Oh I placed it too fast. <laughs> okay. There we are. Vertical speed. Reduce that right down to about four hundred feet a minute. And there's not actually 12 miles out yet, it was 13 miles. Get rid of the speed brake. Arm it as well. There you go. Over on that a bit, but that's fine. We'll, we'll come back on. And because we've got the localizer, no matter where we are on the localizer, we'll still capture that glide slope. So that's all good. So the glide slope has come through at any time. Cabin crew should be seated for landing soon. There's 12 miles. There's 180 knots. Thank you, Hannah. You're very quiet today. Why is that? Why is that? There you go. That's all good. They're ready. And they'll see us on the ground. Lovely. Glass Hope is basically going to come right back in again. Same with the localizer. So that's all good. Uh, jolly. All right. So we're about to pass 3,000 feet, 10 miles out, about 8 to 6 miles out. I'll just click this button in and make sure the yeah, approach phase is active. I'm going to go over here, keep this on the inner page so we can see our current flight time. I'm looking at 4 hours and 9 minutes so far, so basically 4 hour, 10 minute flight. Not too shabby. There's the glide slope, that's in, that's all good. And there's 9 miles. So yeah, 8 to 6 miles I'll push this in, so that'll set automatic speed, which will set to our approach speed of 141, not 150 now. Good. And there's localizer, no longer starred, and same with the glide slope now, so that's all good. Checking for any AI. There are AI in the ground, but they're not blocking us. Hopefully there aren't any blocking the uh, any jetways. Hopefully we get some stands with jetways. I'm not sure what that smoke is, but uh, okay. <laughs> Flaps too. You can see that come out. Lovely. It's flaps too. Nose is coming down. We've got a bit more uh, lift. And that's seven miles. That's basically halfway between six. It is halfway between six and eight miles. So we set the final approach speed. Let the aircraft accelerate by itself. And when we pass two thousand feet and above, we'll set uh, landing gear down and config three. And then whenever we're uh, happy or set config full. So yeah, that's passing 2000. And there we are. So gear down, config 3. There's the gear coming down. Nose is pitching down because we've got a bit more lift, but we're going to in increase our drag here. So the nose will be pitching up again. So there we are. And there you can see the drag really taking into effect there. Lovely. Config full. And there we are. Landing checklist. The landing gear is down, signs are on, spoilers are armed, flaps are full, and we are all good. Most of the land let's get the rest of the landing lights on, like so. And there we are. Lovely. Let's get rid of the autopilot. There we are. Autopilot disconnected. 
Let's bring this bird to the ground. Safely. Safely, that is. <laughs> Look at the senior around. Very nice. Good, uh, good old MK Studios. Doing an amazing job with scenery. I can see like the red, the red papi lights from here, 1, but 000. I can't really see the white papi lights. I just see one red, and that's it. Yeah, one thousand checked. I'm not sure why. Does it come into like? You can see one big red light, and then one, uh, one small red light, and two small yellow white, uh, white lights. Not sure what <laughs> is going on, but it's fine. We have the glide slope, and we can also fly visually. So. The pappies aren't as ac the most accurate things in the world, but they're just good, uh, good reference to quickly look at, really. But <laughs> we can't really use the reference right now. Ooh, my bad. Uh, low us break. It's fine. There's nothing bad about doing it now, just as long as we have it when we uh, touch the ground. Touch on the ground. So low us break. We do medium, uh, medium reverse, hard reverse. Five hundred. Five hundred. Yeah, I'm not sure what's up with those pappies. And like I said, they're just a bit small. Four hundred. Hundred above. Four hundred twice. Because <laughs> the train below us is uh, changing. Three hundred. Minimum. Continuing. Two hundred. One hundred. Finger in. 40, 30, 20, retard. Out of the throttle, bring the nose up. Five. And touch down. There we are. Out of reverse. Bring the nose down nice and slowly. And there we have it. We have brought the bird to the ground. Very nice. Decel. I should say reverse is green, decel, whatever. Men are breaking, let's vacate left here. Lovely. We have made it. Nice and safely. Now the system can go off. Forward idle. Support is in, flaps up. There we are, we vacated Bravo 4. Lovely. Flight time, 4 hours 13 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated with your seatbelts fastened until the seatbelt sign is. And we'll set the two guests to stand by. And to stand by there. And the lights off. Taxi, turn off on, strobe off. AP, you get that started up. And the weather radar off as well. And the wind shear. Lovely. A Monarch A320. Oh, A321, I can't tell. I think it's an A321. <laughs> nice to see one of them here. <laughs> and then Nikki, I haven't seen those things in a while. Bloody hell. That's crazy. Okay. So. Let's get parked up. Hopefully we have a stand waiting for us. I believe Foxtrot are the ones with the... Yep, they are. Uh, we'll go for Foxtrot. Actually. I'll just keep on taxiing. And I'm just going to go and find the one that the real world parked up at. It's got... Uh, where it has it. It does... And it parts up at Foxtrot 2. Fuck up Foxtrot 2 then. Cool. Let's go there. Don't know where it is. It says there's only one stand being taken up by AI, but I see a bit more than one stand being taken up. But whatever. Uh, I'm not sure why. And for some reason, there's these jetways just poking through to say hello. I'm not sure what that's, what that's on about. Uh, I have to change that. Just edit it myself and get the AP started up. Don't need any of the lights on anymore. So these are the hotel stands just to the right of us now. And yeah, that's for Foxtrot One and Foxtrot Two. Yeah, you're not meant to be there. Anyway, that's not even Foxtrot Two. That's Juliet. The Golf Twenty Five. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that's on about. Okay, so that's that's Juliet one, and Foxtrot two has been taken up. No, Golf Golf two. Oh my! You got a bit further to go. 
let's, let's just carry on. Do I know where I'm taxiing around this airport? I do not. Oh, Foxtrot 4. Okay, I think this airport's a bit... Please don't say this is Foxtrot 2. It's Juliet. I'm so confused. We will just turn in right here, it's a free stand. And uh, we'll change this parking facility. Uh, I should check the charts actually, because... Juliet 3 it is. All Juliet positions. I'll park up here, and I'll see what GSX thinks this stand is at. Because I'm super confused, because it says there's loads of fox shot stands for me. But in the real world... Yeah, I just don't know. That's just so weird. How's the aircraft doing on turning around? It's got a good turning circle, I must say. Yeah, it did park where that Ryanair is, I think. But I guess the uh, the ground markings have just changed because I just looked at uh, quickly looked at the online um, flight radar to see where it went. I guess Google imagery isn't updated. All the scenery isn't updated, but the scenery was updated like a few months ago, so. I don't think it's that. Anyway, let's make our way in. Passengers thinking, what the <laughs> is happening? Obviously there's no safe dock here, which is rather weird. There should be one. Anyway, we'll have to take a look for ourselves. Oh, that brake's a bit too hard. Let's park there, whatever. Right, parking brake on. I just saw that little five, and I bet that's a. Yep, there is a jetway inside the terminal. <laughs> what? Right, if you bleed on, engines. Good night. Uh, well, flight time four hours and thirty-two minutes down there. It says four hours twenty-six there, but thirty-two down here. Four hours thirteen minutes flight time. Beautiful. Welcome to Tenerife South, anyone, everyone. Sorry about that. I think GSX and the scenery just doesn't really like each other, which is why I kind of messed up our parking there today. But I hope you forgive me on that. But let's get the uh, people deboarded if this is a stand. It is not. <laughs> this is this is just great, isn't it? If I just go up and up so I know these are so jetways. Hmm. It really, it really. So, Juliet 3, we can, we can get a jetway connected up. Lovely. Well, that's great. Ah, you know what? I think it could be. If I go to customize airport positions. Yes. It, it doesn't. It, it's using the default. That's why. I'm not sure why, though, it's doing that. A fastest reset GSX. Uh, no, reset so doing whatever I did. Anyway, so GSX is broken right now. I know how to fix it, so I'll, I'll go and do that after the video. I should have checked that before, but it's what it is. So I can't get any of the, the passengers kind of deboarded. Uh, it is what it is. Let's go and open the doors automatic, um, not automatically, manually. Uh, for those of you wondering what the landing rate was, it was minus 121 feet per minute. Doors, uh, make sure the jet was connected up before we open up the door. And as soon as we see it stop moving, there we are. Open it up. And the cargo doors. I'll go and fix that GSX issue. I think I know why it's broken. I, I think. I can't guarantee. But I think I know why. Hopefully, the reason how I know it works. Well, it's broken. I can fix it. And uh, we can get it work working uh, for the next time. So yeah. I, get, I guess it's a bit of a mix of... Yeah, so this is Foxshot 4. Juliet 3, Golf 2, Juliet 1. It's like Juliet Golf Foxtrot. Uh, no, Juliet Golf. Juliet Foxtrot. Juliet Golf. Like, what? <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, we'll. I'll try and fix that for next time. I'm sorry about GSX. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. And bye bye. And Ryanair is photobombing for now. <laughs>